Hello Lola's, welcome back to my channel. Guys, if you're new to this channel, well, you're in the right place. If you're looking for conversation about reborn silicone babies, everything from my real life to my pretend underground world, you've made it to your destination. Hit that subscribe button, click the like button. Don't forget to share it with some of your other friends might that might be lost in Wonderland and looking for a place to you know, have fun, laugh, get serious, get mad, disconnect, hang up on me, whatever you want to do. I'm here for it. So anyway, today I'm here with Baby Memphis and Baby Memphis is the Alexis sculpt by Cassie Brace and he was painted by me. Eventually, he will be getting his little big head rooted. Um, but for now, it is what it is. Also, I just want to say the month of September is the month for um, sickle cell awareness. So if you're not putting your babies in red, go ahead and represent your babies in red for sickle cell awareness. As you guys know, um, my silicone baby, and I think I've mentioned this in a video before, but I've deleted so many videos and not uploaded them. I don't know if it was one that got uploaded. Um, baby Noah that used to be in my collection yeah was named after real a real baby name noah um well i would say that was part a big part of why i decided to go with that name um and he is a he's a real boy with sick cell and um he's like the most heroic baby ever 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 and so that's how i really really got into it his mom is like so amazing with you know giving facts and details about sickle cell itself and even though I had a relative with sickle cell that actually um did eventually well we're not gonna get into that but I never knew like all the details of sickle cell I even had I even have still um childhood friends that had sickle cell but just still didn't know all the details so i've been learning a lot from the posts that she makes and stuff like that the information that she do share but moving right along i just wanted to debunk a few rumors and also just kind of chat with you guys while i get him dressed um although i did take some pictures so i will be posting him in his red and he'll probably put this back on eventually but um so number one i people the the main thing that people want to know is where i buy my babies from and how do i sell the ones that i make so number one um when i buy my full body painted and completed and rooted silicone babies over the past few years the only person i have been bought i bought the, them from was claire teller and her website is clairetelladolls.com. Okay. Um, but the ones that I make, I buy kits from different people, um, different sculptors. I find them on Facebook. Um, I used to use eBay as a big to do, but eBay has changed so much and it's really not a lot on eBay. So I don't really, um, go to eBay as my main source anymore, but you still can find dolls on eBay. But, um, and I'll get more into, you know, shopping for the babies, but, so that's that. So I would buy a blank kit from there and then I paint my own and root my own silicone now. I, in the past, when I first started out, I sent a baby off to be rooted. Um, my second silicone that I painted, I sent it off to be rooted. And then the um, two other babies I had rooted by other people, um, Phoebe and Kaysen, and then um, Nima was rooted by people, and then not, not the same people. Um, so that's that. Um, but now I, I primarily, if I don't sell it ball, I root it myself um the silicone that I do paint and sell at this point I don't even know if I will sell any more bald 
uh, silicone babies um, moving forward. But um, the biggest thing that I've been hearing lately is that I only sell my babies in my Chatterbox membership, paid membership. Um, I can see how that would seem so, you know, crazy. I want to say use the word unfair, but it's really not unfair, not unfair for um, me to sell wherever I feel, you know, fit to sell because it's it's my dolls. But I would say if I was a follower, I would feel you know, maybe a little slighted because if I've been following you for years and now you're starting to sell your dolls and you only sell to people that pay for your membership, well, I would feel like I'm kind of being cheated or something. I don't know. You know how we do as humans. It may not be the most right way to, 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 to feel, but it makes sense. But that is not true. Um... I don't just sell on there. I just post there first. And a lot of times, it's not even, you know, it's there for like five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then I'm uploading, posting to Facebook. But what I found and what I've always found with Facebook and why I used to primarily sell on eBay is because a lot of people will message you and um, they take a lot of time, which, you know, when you're making a purchase and you're not very comfortable and you haven't been doing it for a while, it does take you longer to, you know, make a decision and you have questions and all that and stuff. But that's not my fault that there are other people that know what they want, ready to go. They don't have any questions. The only question they have is, how can I pay? So by the time people, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't ask questions because by all means you should ask questions and I am not calling anybody a time waster, but this is what I'm just telling you guys what usually happens. Someone message me and say, Hey, I see you selling, you know, Kenya or I see you selling Rico. How much are you selling them for? Meanwhile, the whole listing says price and everything, but price, what scope it is. Now, when I look for a baby and I see they list the scope name, first thing I do is go search the scope name. And I look at the measurements, I scroll and look at the blank kit and look at the scope, the feet, the hands, all the things that matter to me about a scope before I even contact the seller. You know why? Because I don't care how well it's painted. If it's got some goofy feet or goofy hands, I don't want it. So I'm not going to even ask because I don't care how much it is because I know I don't want it. I don't want it. Just like I say, I don't want it. I-O-N, want it. <laughs> so, um, then the person, you know, asks, like, can you show me more pictures? Da-da-da-da-da. And then I come back and I say, well, the baby just sold. But we were talking. Yeah, right. We were talking. They were paying. I mean, and it, it sounds rude, but when you're in that position where you're selling your dolls and even other collectors that don't paint know how that feels and they know how it works. And even sometimes I feel bad because it's like, you know, um, someone contact me, tell me they're ready to pay. And then they're like, well, I need to you know, do this and, you know, I'll, I'll pay by this time and all this and stuff. But that's not what you just said. Then somebody else messaged me and be like, hey, um, I'm ready to send the money. Where can I send it? What am I supposed to do? Wait on you to then turn around and say, and I've done this before. I've, I've said, no, I have somebody that's planning on buying it. The other person move on. Something else catch their eye. They, Because, you know, once you get hyped up for a baby, y'all know as a collector, you be like, okay, I'm getting me a baby. So you'll sit and buy whatever baby you can get your hands on at that point because now you done got your 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 um self hyped up for getting a new baby. And they move on. And then this other person comes and 
So you're holding the doll for them. And then they say to you, well, yeah, I, I, I couldn't move this or this didn't work out. So, yeah, if you have somebody else to sell it to, go ahead. Or, or better yet, they never even, they stop responding and just move on. And there you was holding your baby for them. And now you contact the other person and say, well, you know, the last person didn't pay. Um, she's still available. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I just bought another doll. Or, oh, I'm sorry, um, I'm not interested anymore. Or they just don't respond no more either because they've moved on, right? So that's why a lot of times people won't do that. That's number one. So number one, the rumor is false. I do not just sell to my Chatterbox members. Um, Sometimes my Chatterbox members are both on Facebook and um Instagram and on in the chat box. Sometimes they don't even see it in the chat box. They see it first on Facebook, but a lot of times the people in the chat box actually do buy my babies, but I don't just post it there. There has been times where I posted, listen, when I was selling Kenya, I posted her on Facebook, like in several places in Facebook, my main page, my group page, you know, in other groups available. And, but she still ended up selling to someone in the chat box. But I got other inquiries from Facebook, but that's where she ended up selling. So it's, you know, people like to, to get mad about things that you have no control over. I have absolutely no control over who's going to end up paying. Um, I don't have to, to love you. I do have to feel, feel good about the transaction and feel like you're someone that's not going to scam me. Um, but I don't have to, we don't have to be best friends. We don't have to be a person that talk every day. You don't have to, so you don't have to form like a fake relationship with me to buy my dolls. I, I will sell to anyone because I mean, you're not buying me, you're buying the doll. So it don't, you know, it don't matter to me if we never really chatted before. If you're actively buying in the community or maybe it is your first time buying in the community, but you know, you got a legit PayPal address and you ready to buy I mean that's the most important thing so that part is not the case now I will tell you there is a rumor that I will do private orders or customs for certain people but won't do them for everyone that rumor is true that rumor is true and I'm speaking for myself, and it's true for a lot of other people. Um, everybody have that one person that if they ask them, they might just go ahead and say, yeah. Do I do that often? No. Do I plan to do that? No. Um, moving forward, I, I hope that I don't um, give in to it. I don't want to put you on the rainbow sides, baby. Cause that don't match. Um, should have brought you some more socks over here, boy. But um, yeah, I just so that I I have painted privately for certain people, and I probably will always do that from time to time. But I prefer not to. Um, I prefer to just paint so that people can see um what they they um they're getting and um and then like it from there um my prices are never set in stone um what i sold my doll for you know last year may not be the same price that i'll sell a doll for this year i may paint the same as i sculpt and it may be a whole different price but what I don't do is base my price off of the buyer. And that part I hate because I've had that done to me. I don't look at you and, and look at your portfolio of your collection and say, oh, yeah, she got money. 
I'm going I'm to jack this up about three or four hundred dollars. That I do not do. Um, but what I do is I might look at my, my work and say, oh, snap, girl, you did that. <laughs> and then I'm like, this baby is worth a little bit of money. You know, it's like the kit is nice. It's a sold out kit. You can't really get it. Or it's kind of like a mix up kit, like somewhat of a one of a kind to a certain extent. Um, it costs me more money because if I combine kits, you know, that's like just a kit alone. You're looking at like 250 because you had to take two kits, whole kits to make to get the parts. So, yeah, I might that it might be a little, little more expensive than my average dolls. Um, but that's pretty it. Do I charge? I don't charge for skin tone. I don't go, oh, this baby is chocolate. Yes, I'm going to charge. But it might appear that way sometime because if that particular chocolate baby is like dead on and it's amazing and it's in rare form, something that I normally don't hit, um, it's a unicorn in my portfolio, then yeah, it might be a little bit more pricey. But it's definitely not going to be solely off the fact that I went darker because going darker for me is a pleasure and I absolutely love it and hell I'm just excited that I, I when I get there that I'm able to get there so I'm not even thinking about oh how many layers I did another thing I don't I'm not the owl from the Tootsie Pop commercial I'm not counting my licks I'm not counting my strokes I'm not like Oh, how many times, how many layers you put in a, you know, people do that to justify cost. It takes me 355 and a half layers and four ounces of paint to paint a black baby versus a Caucasian baby. It only takes me 175 strokes and 1.25 ounces of, <laughs> no, no, no. I have to pounce 50,000 times versus 100,000 times. I, I don't I don't think like that when I'm painting I'm, I'm in pure bliss I don't even shoot I, it's lucky I even know where I am when I'm painting sometimes especially once I really zone out sometimes like I'd be listening to a book I have to go back and listen to the whole chapter because I don't even know what the people said and I'm just sitting up by myself and I just zone out all of a sudden all I'm thinking about is okay so I want you to look like this if you can go there for me, baby, we will be doing good. I, you know, that, that'd be me. So, yeah. So, no, that I don't do that. Yes, my ball babies do typically sell for $800. Um, rooted is usually somewhere around $1,200. But not always. I will sell them for less and I will sell them for more. It just depends. So that's that. And um I I have went back and forth and I said I'm not gonna even put it out there until I actually feel like I can do it. You know, I thought about well, why don't I just do one custom spot, you know, every so many months or whatever. Um but I just don't every time I say I'm gonna do that something happens and it reminds me why I probably shouldn't other rumor I don't ever ship overseas um most of the time I don't like to to be honest have I done it in the past absolutely will I do it in the future most likely um but I, I just don't care for it I don't care to do it. It's just easier, less hassle. And I am not someone that just paints and sells full time all the time. And so there, you know, it's just a lot with selling. So anyway, I know this is a long video, but it's just that sometimes people, I feel like rumors have always have an ounce of truth in it somewhere. But then there's a lot of twists and turns to it and people make the story to fit their narrative or their cause or their agenda. Um, I'm not having any major problems. So I'm just telling you, I'm just making the video in general because, you know, I've seen a couple things, a few things popped up. But there there has been people like saying, well, I know you only sell to your members only. But that's not the case. And I don't want that false narrative to be out there. 
Um, and, you know, sometimes people say things to artists and they feel like um, they can do that. They feel like because you are the one, the artist is the one that have to be professional. And the artist has to just take whatever a collector say, whatever they do, and be okay with it. Because if you don't, I'm going to tell everybody that you're unprofessional. So I can call you all types of stupid, crazy, or make side remarks of saying you're shady, you're unethical, you're not doing stuff the way I want you to do it. But you better just sit there and take it or I'm going to throw a tantrum and tell everybody that your customer service sucks and you are unprofessional. So all you better do is try to kiss my butt and make it make my boo boo. OK. Absolutely not. You don't get that here. You don't get to bully me because I have to I have a, a so-called quote unquote bigger reputation to hold up. You don't get to do that. You don't get to treat me less than a person because I want to make money. You don't get to do that. A lot of artists do allow collectors to do that to them. People also will come back to them and say, well, you know, I don't want to have to publish this if you don't do so and so and so. But I mean, that's a threat. That's like blackmail. Like who the hell does that? Oh, yeah, I know people you don't go do what you gotta do get a commercial if you want to like you don't get to do that to artists you don't get to do that to your other collector friends i see other collector friends do it to collectors i see them do it to artists and artists don't want to talk about it because when they talk about these things everybody feel like they're in the wrong there are times where I side with the collector. I believe that the collector is right. There are times when I believe that the artist is right. There's times when I believe that both are wrong. But you don't get to just bully someone just because they have more to lose than you. And that is not fair. People will come back to you after six months, a year, and be like, well, such and such happened to my baby and I need you to fix it. And... um. So-and-so fix their babies back and do spa days. I don't understand. And then if you say you don't, oh, she got poor customer service. She don't stand by her work. You guys around here putting babies in swimming pools, putting goddamn supper for eight in these babies' head and sticking KY and uh, mixing it with petroleum jelly that ain't nobody told you to put no petroleum jelly in their mouth. Yeah, but you that's what you're using instead of KY and doing all type and I, not just even with silicone. Y'all bathing down the, the reborns, got soap and water washcloths and giving them baths and y'all taking them out and y'all got them in the pools with chlorine and you, you're taking them out to the islands and all your friends flipping them around and y'all playing and swinging around and role playing, got them in grass and dirt and God knows where your cat's licking over them and your dog's <laughs> dragging them through the house. And then you come back talking about, it didn't hold up. <laughs> you think? <laughs> you think? Like, for real? And then it's like, well, I mean, I'll pay you. You can't pay me to fix that. Like, No. You can't pay me to fix that. You know how long it takes to redo and undo and overdo something that you've already done before? First of all, it's a mind thing. It's mind over freaking matter. And my mind ain't that great. So first of all, I'm going to have a problem because I got, I'm thinking in my head, like, I already done this shit. I don't want to do it a second time. And then the other thing I'm going to be thinking is like, Man, I'm about to refresh this baby back to new for what? $50? What that's going to do for me? I'm going to spend that almost on just brushes, new brushes. Because when you bring your baby back, let's say if it's silicone, I'm just saying if it's silicone. If you bring your baby back and it's silicone, I have to use special brushes for your baby. I have to put your baby in a whole separate area from my regular area because I don't know what the hell you've been doing with your baby. You could have been soaking it in latex. And then it's going to contaminate my, all my brushes, my whole work area. So I have to use a whole separate thing because I don't know if it's going to cure or what's going to happen. So now, yeah, it's not really that worth it. 
reborns. I've never stripped a reborn before. I have my other, like, you know, um, fellow artists tell me, like, just strip it. Like, when I say, oh, I got a baby I messed up on, just strip it. I, I don't know how to strip it. And by the time I go to scrape it off paint, and then it's all looking dirty looking, and I got to try to figure this out, I could have just bought the kid over. I done spent, a, I done spent hours that would have equivalent is that a word equivalated equivalency something like that would have been equivalent to the amount of time I mean to yeah the amount of pay I would have gotten if I would have just bought a new kit repainted it the kits are like what at average $120 I'm gonna spend four or five hours stripping this kit down man I could have been I bought me another kit done got halfway through it or at least got the baseline going. Listen, it, some stuff ain't worth it to me. But it might be worth it to other people. If it's a sold out kit, you can't get it no more, I guess. But for me, I'm just like, anybody want a sold out kit? <laughs> it's messed up, but you can have it. Like, I don't... I'm just... My mind doesn't work like everybody else. And I know a lot of people think differently. And then there's people that can relate. But... You know, so therefore, I don't, I don't do that. But, so it's just so many things that a lot of people don't want to talk about. Um, a lot of things that I didn't understand until I started doing stuff on my own. And then, or somebody told me. Or, or you hear about what somebody else did. Like, say for instance, these videos that go up and they be talking about scammers. Or they be talking about time wasters and all that and stuff. And you be like... And they be talking about the customer. When you hear it playing out, like, oh, she did this, she did that. You be like, oh, I did that before. Oh, it does sound stupid. Like, oh, I, I don't want to do that no more. So that's why I don't really, like, hate when videos come out and people talk about certain scenarios and stuff like that. But I also sometimes kind of cringe a little bit because it seems like most of the time the artist is always going to get the blame and stuff like that, even when they really probably shouldn't type thing so yeah so anyway um that's that now if you you know i don't know you know it's like some people are really good at what they do they know how to undo break redo fix it you know those people are really good and and they actually some people actually enjoy it so you know by all means nothing wrong with that um, I have seen people that do makeovers on other artists' work, and they charge almost half of what you already paid for it. Man, I wish I would. Somebody asked, told me the other day, was like, why don't you get this, you know, doll rerouted? For what? I'm not investing money in somebody else's work. Like, no. Redo for what? Like, no, I'm not, I'm not redoing nothing. I don't re, I don't send stuff for no rework, no reroute. No, it's going to get resold <laughs> if I don't like it. I'm not, I'm not one of those people. I'm just, I think I'm very simple, but maybe up to other people, I'm complex. I don't like my situations complicated. I have not been the one. These type people are the people that you see on Facebook that status says complicated. There's no complicated. You either in a relationship or you're not. You're either like it or you don't. When I get a doll, I either like it or I don't. I don't care. When I get it, and sometimes I, I might try because I might think it maybe it's the waiting or something like that. That's a little different. You know, like I said, there's no straight black and white. There is some gray areas, but for the most part, once I realize and I establish that this is, I don't like it. I'm selling it. I'm not trying to fix it. I'm not going to go and get it to hair color changed and all this. No, I'm not changing the original state. First of all, a lot of y'all is fickle. And as soon as you go to touch an artist's original work, they're going to be like, oh, that's not original. I don't, I, she, she, I shouldn't pay more because she changed this and she changed that. I don't have time for that. Here it is. Here it go. And then they'll be like, well, you're going to lose like money. You'll lose like two or three hundred. I'd rather lose that than lose weeks and weeks trying to get it fixed and then I still don't like it and then now I got um invested even more money in it and y'all be doing too much that's what I'm saying but anyway this video is super super long and I'm gonna get back to it in a minute but if you guys enjoy these types chats let me know 
and I'll be sure to do more. 